Here at Toyota North America campus, we're a little shop kind of hidden in the back corner. About two and a half months ago, Jim Lentz, our CEO, was sitting down with the CEO of Pizza Hut and they said, wouldn't it be cool to have a zero carbon footprint pizza delivery vehicle that actually made the pizzas while it was on the way to the end user. My first reaction is I had no idea what to think. You know, a robotic pizza making car, it was kind of hard to wrap your head around it at first. And then once we saw a rendering or two, it started becoming more feasible in my mind. I know nothing about fuel cell vehicles. I know nothing about robots and automation. So we may be the perfect people to do this. We had a little laugh about it, but then we went to work. We're standing right here in front of the rolling chassis from a 2018 long bed Tundra pickup. This will be the actual structure that everything else will fit onto. We're working on the fuel cell side as a completely separate part of it. After this thing is run for 12 hours, there is no harmful carbon emissions, anything else. The only byproduct is water. Starting from the back of the truck, it's gonna be a front wheel drive, so we don't really need a differential. You come forward to the fuel tanks. The lowest part of them is still above the frame rail. The fuel cell, this is where the package comes out that, that will run the drive unit, the shifter, everything else will come up in that area right there. Right now, the most time consuming part, I think is gonna be just the accuracy of getting the robots mounted. Nazi Robots is a giant robotic company that makes things for assembly lines. They do some stuff in the plants in Toyota. Through a cold call to them, they were so excited about the project that they offered support and programming, expedited shipping. They wanted to be a part of this. How long until you get to where you can start working on this on the bench? There's a lot of imagination that needs to go into, you know, making parts fit and, you know, creativity as far as getting from point A to point B, like how do you need to do that? And uh, a lot of that, you know, seeing metal shapes and things like that, it uh, gets you to those points a little easier. You know, everybody has a different idea how it's supposed to go. And so you kind of collectively take everybody's idea and come up with one and try and shape metal into that idea. And then you say, okay, well, how do you slice a pizza with no hands? We don't have the same kind of wrist action. So we've gone through four different versions of a cutter until we found something that we think will work. There was hours and hours and hours of figuring all this stuff out. What it really boils down to, as long as that piece that the gripper is gonna grab, the new one ends up at the same exact place every single time, the robot can grab it and go with it. It knows what to do. Once it's got it, it knows exactly what to do. Once we check everything to make sure the robot's doing the path we want, we will flip it to playback mode and we can speed the robot up. So we're pretty good right now. So we were behind the eight ball a little bit, but because this is one of their top programmers, he's able to make up time because it's, it's watching him work is fascinating because it's almost like second nature to him. Close, but no cigar. There's a huge challenge with repeatability. So right now we could finish up and we could get to SEMA and say, all right, we made one pizza. That's not enough. I want to made 75 or 100 of them before we ever get to SEMA. I want to be able to say, I can hand this tablet to anybody and they can make a pizza. 